This tutorial shows you how to find which populations differ from which other populations in their genetic distinctiveness as measured by pairwise FST. This tutorial follows up on the results from the population genetics software Arlequin where an analysis of molecular variants was performed. This assumes you are using Ubuntu Linux version 20.04 as your operating system. If you do not have Linux, you can emulate it on your Windows or Mac computer for free. See the show notes for details. In fact, I am emulating Linux right now on my Mac computer using VirtualBox. Speaking of which, I have a VirtualBox virtual machine pre-configured with the software I will show you today as well as other population genetics and ecological niche modeling software. See the show notes below for step-by-step -step instructions to download and hook up this virtual machine within your Windows or Mac computer. This tutorial assumes you have RStudio installed on your machine, which also requires R to be installed. Or you can use the pre-configured virtual machine I referenced earlier. First, open a web browser and visit my website, joshbanta.com. Click on Tutorials and scroll down until you find how to get the pairwise FST information out of Arlequin into more convenient formats. Click the files needed for tutorial. When the screen finishes loading, click the download button and select direct download. When the downloading is complete, you can close your web browser. Open up File Explorer, which if you're using my virtual machine is pinned to the left, or you can search for it down below. Navigate to your downloads folder. This is the file we just download. It's in a compressed zip format. By double-clicking on it, we open up an Archive Manager. Now return to your File Explorer. Click on Desktop. And we'll take this folder called Arlequin Parsing out of the compressed directory and drag it to our desktop, thereby uncompressing the folder and all of its files and making them ready for use. Close the Archive Manager. Next, we open up the program RStudio, which will be pinned to your left on my machine or which you can find by searching below. Click File, Open File to open up the R script that we will be using today. Navigate to your desktop, open up the Arlequin parsing folder, and click the file Arlequin Parsing 91120.r and click Open. Let's step back for a moment and look at the file that we will be working with today. Open up File Explorer. Go to your desktop, double click on the folder that we're using. This file, output.xml, was made from another tutorial how to convert a FASTA file to an Arlequin file. See my website under Tutorials if you're interested in how we made this file, or see the show notes for a direct link. This file contains the data that we want to visualize in order to compare the FST values among populations in a pairwise fashion, but it's not in a user-friendly format. We need to get the data out of this file into more user-friendly formats so that we can more easily visualize and contextualize the results. When you're using your own real data that was derived from Arlequin, your output file may not be called output.xml. It may be called something else.xml. So be aware of that. And that becomes important when we go back over here to RStudio. Look at line 16. This contains the name of the file that we are getting the data out of. If you're bringing your own file to this tutorial, 
it may not be called output.xml. You will need to change this name here to reflect the file name of your file that you're bringing with you from Arlequin. It will still be ending in .xml, but be sure to change the name to reflect whatever your name is. Of course, if you're following my exact tutorial, you're using the file output.xml, there's nothing to change. Running this script is straightforward. Whenever you're using R, however many times you use the script, you always just need to run the entire thing. There's a lot of ways to do that. You can manually highlight everything using your mouse. You can use Control A, but just make sure that everything is highlighted all the way to the end. But wait, don't hit run. I almost forgot. We need to set our working directory. If you're working on this on your own data and you don't set the working directory, this R script will not work. Session, set working directory, choose directory. Navigate to your desktop. Click on the Arlequin Parsing folder. Do not double click on it. You want to highlight the entire folder and press open. All right, let's keep everything highlighted, the entire script, and press run. This took about a minute or a little over a minute on my computer to run. You'll know that it worked if you see this graphic here on the side. Let's talk about this graph on the side. This is something that you could use as a part of your publications. Going down the left column here, this is a list of your populations. If you called your populations by names back in the previous tutorials when we were using Arlequin, then you would see the names of your populations here. But in our tutorials, we named the populations by number. So this is population 8, 5, 7, and so on. Along the diagonal here, we also have the population names. So this empty square here is comparing population 8 to itself. That comparison is not meaningful, so there's nothing shown. Same thing down here in the bottom corner, comparing population 10 to itself is not meaningful, so nothing is shown. The colors represent how strong the FST va value is for that pairwise FST combination. So for instance, comparing population 5 to population 8, there is a moderate level of FST among them. What this means is that population 5 and population 8 can generally be to told apart from one another by looking at the individual's DNA. If I give you an individual, you can do a pretty good job of telling me whether it came from population 5 or, or population 8 by looking at its DNA. The DNA of those two populations are distinct from one another. The darker blue means that the, the populations are even more distinct. So this is comparing population 7 to population 8. Population 7 and population 8 have a very large FST value up near 1. That means that they are very genetically distinct from one another. FST values near 0 mean that two populations are not very genetically distinct from one another. FST values range from 0 up to 1. So, for instance, this white color here compares population 1 to population 7. Population 1 and population 7 cannot be told apart by looking at, the, at their DNA. If I give you an individual and I tell you this is from population 1 or population 7, tell me which it is, you will not be able to tell them apart by looking at the DNA because population 1 and population 7, those individuals all have similar DNA to one another. The X that's superimposed on these squares means not significant. So for here, for instance, even though in this square we see a dark value corresponding to a high FST, so even though we would think that we can tell population 3 apart from population 8 based on its FST value, actually that difference between population 3 and population 8 is not significant. There's probably just one weird individual between these two populations 
that makes the two populations seem genetically distinct, but overall the two populations are not genetically distinct. So what you want to look for in this plot is you want to look for instances of the darker the colors, the more distinct, where there is no X. The darker the colors, the more distinct when there is no X means that two populations are very genetically distinct from one another and you can easily tell them apart based upon uh, their DNA sequences, the two populations. But any instances where you see an X, that means actually you really cannot tell those two populations apart. Even if the average FST value appears to be high, in general, you can't really tell those two populations apart. So you want to look for squares that are as dark as possible without X's for, to find the highest FST values. The most differentiated populations from one another are the ones with the darkest colors and no X's. If you see an X, it means really, even though the estimate of FST on average was high, we don't have a lot of confidence in that estimate. And really, you wouldn't do a very good job of telling apart uh, those two populations from one another uh, based upon their DNA sequences. Let's export this image so we can save it for later use. Always when you go to export, always save as a PDF. The image files save in a poor quality that will not be suitable for a journal. You can choose the directory where you want to save it, but we will just go with our working directory. And you should give it a name ending in something.pdf so you'll be able to recognize it. And you can actually change the name of the file here if you desire. Click on Save. By the way, just to go over that step again, I went to Export drop-down menu and I chose Save as PDF, not Save as Image. With that taken care of, we can now exit out of RStudio. When it asks us if we want to save the workspace image, it is referring to the output down here. We do not need to save it. If it asks you if you want to save your script, that means that you may have edited something in your script and you may want to save it. But we don't need to save the output uh, from the workspace image, so we click on Do Not, Don't Save. And by the way, here is that plot that we were looking at in R that's available for use later on. You can use various programs, for instance, Inkscape and others, to convert this PDF to an image file. Before we conclude, let's look at two other files that were produced by this tutorial. This one here stands for Arlequin FST Matrix, and this is the matrix file. That's what those abbreviations stand for. Double click on it. This will open it up in LibreOffice. When you come to this screen, all of the defaults are fine. You can simply click OK. This is the same data that was in that graphical image that I showed you in numeric format. The ordering of the populations is different, but this is still population 1, population 2, population 3. So in this file, the populations are in numeric order. You, could, you can change that, but it's usually not going to be very necessary. If your populations had names, you would see the population names here and here. So this is the comparison of population 1 to itself. It's not a meaningful, so it just gets a 0. There's population 1 to population 2. Remember, the higher the FST value, the more genetically distinct the two populations are. And FST values range from 0 to 1. 0 means the two populations are completely not genetically distinct. You can't tell them apart based on their DNA because they all have the same DNA. Versus 1, where the two populations are very distinct and you can tell them apart very easily based on their DNA. So that's population 1 versus population 2. But also, if you come here and do population 2 versus population 1, you get the same information. So Whereas in that graphical image I showed you, there was only the lower diagonal. Here we have the lower diagonal and the upper diagonal, but they contain the same information. So that population 3 versus population 2, 0.020985, is equal to 
population 3 here versus population 2 here, 0 0.09285. So this is the uh, FST values. Let's close this. Now we're going to double click on this other file. This other file shows us the FST P values. I will explain. The defaults are fine, so you can click OK. Now in this graph, we only have data for the lower diagonals, which is fine because the data for the upper diagonals was redundant. And the absence of data is indicated by NA. This is showing the p-values associated with, with the uh, FST comparisons. The, any p-values below 0 0.05 means that the FST value is significant. P-values less than 0 0.05 tell you that the, that the corresponding FST value is significant. So for instance, when comparing population 2 to population 1, and uh, it's actually not labeled here at the top. Well, they're labeled. So this is population 1, population 2, population 3. You may not see the population names here, though. If you named your populations something else, a good safe thing to do would be to highlight, click on box A2, uh, hold down on your mouse, and highlight lines 2 through 15 as you see, and then right click if you're on a Windows type mouse, or if you're on a Mac laptop with a trackpad, push down with two fingers. Uh, select copy, then put your cursor in uh, location B1, and then uh, right click if you're on a Windows type mouse or two finger push down if you're on a Mac trackpad. Go down to paste special, and then scroll down further to paste special. Select transpose in the options at the bottom and click OK. We are pasting data into cells that already contain data. Click Yes. All right, now we can just be sure that we're, that we, that we're talking about the right populations. So this is population one, population two, etc. If you'd named your uh, populations Fred, Sue, and Sally, now it would say up here at the top Fred, Sue, and Sally as, before, as opposed to before where it said V1, V2, V3, V4. Back to what we were talking about. If you compare population 1 to population 2, the p-value is very small. It's, all, it's According to the program, it's 0. That's less than 0 0.05. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then FST is significant. So this means whatever, uh, this, this means that there is some genetic differentiation between populations 1 and populations 2. We can look at the other table to see how strong that differentiation is, how easily we can tell apart the two populations by looking at their DNA. But the fact that the p-value is less than 0 0.05 tells us that there is some genetic distinctness. And if you look hard enough, you can tell apart these two populations based upon their DNA. If I give you an individual from one of these populations and ask you to figure out which one, it is possible to tell me with relative certainty which population that individual came from based on its DNA if you look hard enough. That's what this table tells us. The significant p-values tell us whether there is any significant genetic differentiation between the two populations. The other table that I showed you earlier tells you how strong that genetic differentiation is. But you don't move on to look at the other table and talk about the FST value on the other table until you first establish from this table that the FST comparison is significant. All right, so that's how you make these FST comparisons based upon the output from Arlequin.